One year ago, I walked into a bakery and bought a loaf of bread. I then proceeded to buy onions and leeks and bananas and apples and all sorts of food. And uh, my housemate was laughing at me because I was filling up the fridge with all of these foods that she'd never seen me buy before. Oh, such happy memories. G'day everyone, I'm Anna Cini. I live in Sydney and I am, um, it's very hot today. <sighs> today I'm gonna give you an update on my IBS situation or my lack of IBS situation. Oh, I love being on a couch. One year ago, I was cured of my IBS. This is a follow-up video for you, um, just because I get a lot of questions and so I wanna be able to answer your questions today. And I also want to uh, let you know what's happening with me since I've had the treatment. Just a quick recap, I had IBS for about seven years and uh, this time last year, I went to a gastroenterologist and he told me that I needed to have a test for parasites and I found that I had a microscopic parasite the size of one cell. There were many of them in my digestive system and they were causing all of the symptoms of IBS. So I'll get to that and I will also answer some of your most frequent questions. So I always try to reply to the questions and comments that I get on my videos. So please leave a comment. Uh, you can also hit like, let the YouTube algorithm know that this is a good video um, so that other people can see it. The reason I make these videos is to try and improve the world on one level or another. And please subscribe to my channel. You can also click the little bell icon and that will let you know when I've posted a new video. If you keep watching to the end, I'll give you a link to a PDF on how to make 2019 a happier place for you. Okay, so to my update, I have for the last year been able to eat anything. Uh, some of you will have watched my update video when I went back to the gastroenterologist to see if I still had Blastocystis hominis, which is the microscopic parasite that I had. And when I did the second faecal test, mm, faecal tests, it came back showing that actually I wasn't cleared of Blastocystis hominis, but the amount of that parasite that I had in my digestive system was so greatly reduced that it was no longer causing me all the symptoms of IBS. So there's been a few things that I have implemented in my life to try and improve my health since that time. One of the things that I think is extremely important to to keep in mind after you've been on any antibiotic treatment, and I went on triple antibiotic therapy, which was, let me tell you, uh, nasty. <laughs> I was really sick for a week and um, also affected my mental health too. I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't think properly, it was horrible. Uh, it, it worked though, so that was the good thing. So one of the main things that you can do after you've had antibiotic treatment is to give yourself a good dose of probiotics. Probiotics are the healthy bacteria that you want to encourage to develop and grow inside your body. And um, you can buy them at the chemist usually. Um, there's refrigerated ones and non-refrigerated ones. I think the refrigerated ones work a lot better and I, I took a large dose of probiotics for about two or three months after I had this antibiotic treatment. Please let me know if you have had this antibiotic treatment and what, what you found worked for your probiotic therapy. When you take antibiotic therapy, what happens is that you, you swallow the capsule or the tablet or whatever and your body absorbs that antibiotic into your bloodstream. So that's why if you've got an infection on your big toe or in your tonsils or in your earlobe or whatever it is, the antibiotic is able to kill it because it's running all through your bloodstream, your circulatory system. And when that antibiotic comes in contact with the nasty bacteria, it kills it off, which is great. However, you have got a lot of healthy bacteria in your gut, which is used for digestion. And when you take antibiotics, they often kill off some of the good bacteria as well. So for me, when I was on this enormous dose of triple antibiotics, it killed off a lot of the good bacteria in my gut and I needed to replace it. So that's why you take probiotics. So keep that in mind if you ever have to have a course of antibiotics. Okay, on to my update. So I still feel great. 
I still have Blastocystis hominis in my body. However, so do one third of Australians, apparently. Um, most people don't know that it's there because they don't have any symptoms. And now I am one of those people. So I have got it in my digestive system, but I don't have any of the symptoms. I could of course go on another course of antibiotics and try and eradicate those last few Blastocystis hominis. However, I chose to not do another course of antibiotics because I think it is so bad for your body to take antibiotics and it's really best that you do it only when you need to. Here are a few things that I've put in place since that treatment one year ago and it's really helped my health. The first thing that I've done is take apple cider vinegar every morning and you can watch my video about that uh, and my, the recipe that I use. It has really helped to cleanse my body and to keep me in a regular pattern. Pattern. Pooing. I've been pooing regularly. And there are so many benefits to apple cider vinegar um, and one of them is that I don't have thrush anymore. I don't get thrush anymore. So um, really exposing it all today. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. The other things I'm doing are daily meditation. 20 minutes every morning. It is sometimes hard to motivate yourself to do it. I am always glad that I did it. If you don't know how to meditate, there's some wonderful beginners apps that you can get or just go onto YouTube. Um, you're already on YouTube. <laughs> Stay on YouTube. I also do yoga every morning, 20 to 30 minutes, and it just frees you up for the day. I never thought that I had time to do yoga in the mornings. Turns out you need to plan it, make time, <laughs> make sure that you have time. And uh, my body just feels so much freer and I'm still teaching yoga as well. All of these things together, gratitude practice, yoga, meditation, um, what was the other one I said? Apple cider vinegar, uh, all help with my health and specifically my mental health because I've got a history of anxiety due to a whole number of reasons. And if you have a history of anxiety, I'm right there with you, sister. It can be tough. Okay, on to the frequently asked questions section. One of the big questions I got was, who was your doctor? I went to see a gastroenterologist in Darlinghurst, Sydney. Uh, his name is Dr. Tu. He um, is one of many people that can prescribe these antibiotics, which brings me to one of the other common questions I get, which is, which antibiotics did you take? Secnitazole, paramomycin and nitazoxanide. I had to have them made up by the Sydney Compounding Pharmacy. So you can't just get them at the chemist, they had to send them to me in the post. So make sure that you do actually have Blastocystis hominis before you start treating it. So some people have written to me and said that they're going to try and get hold of these antibiotics. But if you haven't had the uh, faecal test to find out that you've got this microscopic parasite, then it's not going to help you at all. It's only going to make things harder for you. So stay curious, go to your doctor, find out more information. It's really, it's, it's super hard. Like I, I am a privileged white person and I live in Australia, which is a really wonderful country and we have a very good medical system and I found it really hard. I speak the language here. I have an education. I have a background in in the medical profession as a registered nurse and I still found it tough. If you can, just keep like, like a dog with a bone, just keep going after information, keep trying to get information, which is partly why you're watching this video. So well done. Uh, another question I got was often about metronidazole, which is also known as flagell. I really don't recommend that you take metronidazole. If, you can, if you're in a country where that's the easy one to get your hands on, don't just take it because it's the only one available. What it will probably do is uh, just get rid of a whole lot of healthy bacteria in your body and uh, leave you feeling quite sick and it probably won't get rid of the blastocystis hominis anyway. The research that I've done, which is a lot, uh, shows that it is effective maybe 5% of the time. I really would not encourage metronidazole. Another question that I got quite regularly was what was the test that you took? If you do suspect that you have Blastocystis hominis and you, you might have it if you've got all of these symptoms, if they've come on quickly. However, if you've had IBS your entire life, 
it's possible that that is not actually what is causing the problem. You might just have um, these symptoms from a myriad of other reasons. So for the faecal test, you have to poo in a jar and who wants to do that ever? No one. But the best thing I can recommend is get a large plastic container, get an ice cream container, pretend it's chocolate ice cream, poo in a container, use the little plastic scoop that they give you at the um, doctor surgery, scoop a bit out, put it in the jar and send it off. Um, flush the rest, throw away the container. I'm all for recycling, but I am not cleaning out a plastic container that had my poo in it to put into the recycling. So um, those two containers have gone in the bin, into landfill. Sorry, everyone. And now for oh, the difficult comment or question. So I have, there's a few people that have commented and said to me, um, you didn't have IBS, your title is misleading, and some of them are a bit unhappy about that. And you know, fair enough. Uh, I'd, be, I'd probably be a bit annoyed if I had IBS all my life and someone was cured and they post this video but actually they had a parasite and the important thing to mention here is that I thought that I had IBS so like many of the people out there who have blastocystis hominis and have been told that they have IBS and what I've found is that doctors tend to go you've got IBS so go and deal with it alone you just sort of like flounder your way through trying to go okay so so should I eat that, should I eat that? And you do all your own research and okay, I shouldn't have that. And then you go to the FODMAP diet and oh, it's a mess and it's hard. And for me, I, um, I didn't know exactly when it started because my symptoms just got progressively worse throughout my last 10, probably seven to 10 years. And, um, and the doctors really, like I saw a number of doctors and they just really weren't interested. So if, you, if you've got IBS, you're, not, you're probably not going to be searching for is it actually IBS or is it something else? Because we're told to um, respect the medical profession and take what they say as gospel. So the reason that I uh, have said that my IBS is cured is because there's a lot of people who think that they have IBS, but actually they've just got a parasite and that needs to be eradicated. So I'd like to apologise for anyone that I have um, upset or offended. It wasn't my intention. I just really want to help people who um, think that they have IBS, but actually it's curable. What is IBS anyway? It's a collection of symptoms. No one really knows what it is. There's, there's a whole lot of things that you can attribute it to, but just like having, having a runny nose and a sore throat can mean that you've got a cold, but it could also mean that you've got a whole lot of other things as well. So we, we don't know very much about IBS, actually. It's just a collection of symptoms and they're not nice symptoms to have. So I hope, I really hope that you can find some answers to uh, the, the pain and discomfort that you live with. I really wanna encourage you if you've got any medical condition at all, just to keep being curious. There's new studies, new procedures, new medicines out all the time. And, and when they make new headway into uh, these, these lifelong conditions, the doctors don't necessarily uh, always follow you up. And it's up to us to try to work out, okay, where can we go with this? What's gonna work better? So maybe you can just say to your doctor, the next time you see them, is there, is there something more that can be done about my asthma or my diabetes or whatever it is? Because they might have some answers and they just hadn't thought to update you. And doctors are busy and GPs don't have a very long amount of time to spend with their patients. So um, yeah, I wanna encourage you to do that. I invite you to join me on my journey as I reach 1 million subscribers and wanna to make today a better day for you. You can also download my free PDF on happiness if you just click on the link below for that. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Give me a like and click subscribe and all the best.